thermal contraction of the line should also be considered. Ice formation in ballast tanks can be prevented using heating and circulation systems. Air vents can be blocked by ice spray. The correct viscosity of hydraulic oils allows hydraulic machinery to work in low temperatures. Hydraulic hoses on cranes must be protected and fastened in order to prevent breakdowns. A covered forecastle is the best protection for the gear, but also protective canvas coverings on windlasses can be used. Heating cables should be used for important equipment. Icing can cause freezing of escape hatches and doors. Control and cargo rooms must be sufficiently heated. Freezable liquids must also be removed from the lifeboats. Ice-covered steel decks are very slippery. Heating or sanding the decks is important for safe walking. Inflatable rafts are not usable in ice conditions, and lifeboats are of limited use for evacuation. Visibility is important because the day is short in midwinter in the Baltic Sea, and because you often have to find the best route by eye. Windows should be heated and have fully operational wipers. Outer layers of clothing must be windproof. Protective headwear is essential. Protecting exposed skin from the wind is important. The danger of frostbite is always present. Fingers, toes, ears, cheeks and the nose freeze most easily. Proper non-slip winter boots are necessary for safe walking on snow and ice. Heat loss increases dramatically with increased wind speed. You must use proper winter clothing to protect your crew and enable efficient working on the outdoor decks. In winter conditions, vessels must keep close watch on their surroundings at all times. Look for and utilize leads and easier ice conditions. If your actual track goes through pack ice, you should find your way utilizing leads, patches of open water and lighter ice conditions, avoiding any hard ice or thick ice flows. Note that large course alterations and deviations from the original track are often necessary, and the shortest route seldom is the fastest. The point of entry should be carefully selected. After the vessel has entered the ice field, speed can be increased as appropriate. Speed depends on ice conditions and the vessel's ice performance. Turning in ice. The danger of the stern swinging when passing through patches of open water or in leads risks damage to propeller or rudder. When entering ice, entry must be made at right angles to the ice. In light ice conditions, the vessel operates independently forward after the waypoints given by the icebreaker. If you are stuck, wait for the icebreaker and when the icebreaker arrives, follow the icebreaker alone or as part of a convoy. When following the icebreaker, your vessel must obey the icebreaker's orders. You must control the distance to the icebreaker both visually and by radar. If another vessel is following your vessel, you should inform her immediately about all changes of your speed on VHF especially if your speed is rapidly decreasing and there is a risk of getting stuck and thus a risk of collision. Constant radio contact, using good English, between your vessel and the icebreaker is a must. All doubts and questions must be clarified immediately with the icebreaker. If there is no pressure in the ice and the channel stays open, a longer distance can be kept between the icebreaker and the assisted vessel. If the assisted vessel gets stuck, the icebreaker will go astern to the side of the assisted vessel to cut it loose.
To successfully break out of the channel, your ship should try to find weak ice. If you are overtaking a vessel in an ice field, you have to keep a safe passing distance. If you go too close, there is a risk of collision, or that both vessels will get stuck. Sometimes there is a need to pass a vessel on the opposite course in the ice channel. In this case, one of the vessels uses the existing channel, the other has to make a new one. The stronger vessel is recommended to break out of the ice channel, while the vessel with less ice performance is recommended to stop and wait. Before this operation, you have to make a plan with the other vessel by using VHF on how both vessels are acting. Distance between passing vessels must be sufficient so that there are always enough ice flows between them. If ice pressure occurs and the vessel seems to get stuck, try to find an easy place to stop. Keep the vessel in wind direction and await orders from the icebreaker. It is especially important to protect her rudder and propeller from ice damage when your vessel is moving astern. The rudder should always be amidships and the propeller should be rotating until the ship is finally stopped in the ice.